what most voters don't know is the way Mitt Romney actually made his fortune by borrowing vast sums of money that other people were forced to pay back. This is the plain, stark reality that somehow eluded America's top political journalist for two consecutive presidential campaigns. Mitt Romney is one of the greatest and most irresponsible debt creators of all time, Taibbi writes. He goes on to say, in the past few decades, in fact, Romney's piled more debt onto more unsuspecting companies, written more gigantic checks that other people have to cover than perhaps all but a handful of people on earth. Well, Matt Taibbi joins us now, contributing editor for Rolling Stone magazine, his most recent in-depth piece called Greed and Debt, the true story of Mitt Romney and Bain Capital, author of the book also Griftopia, a story of bankers, politicians, and the most audacious power grab in American history. Matt Taibbi, welcome to Democracy Now! Lay it out for us. Uh, excellent piece, investigative piece on Mitt Romney's wealth. Where did it start? Well, you know, for, for me, um, it started when I had to cover this campaign earlier this year, and uh, I was listening to uh, Romney's stump speech about uh, about debt. You know, he he came up with this whole image of a prairie fire of debt uh, uh, raging across America that was literally going to burn children alive in the future. And I, I kept thinking to myself, does does nobody know what this guy did for a living and how he made his money? Uh, you know, Mitt Romney is unabashedly uh, a leverage buyout artist, uh, and a leverage buyout artist is a guy who borrows lots of money that other companies have to pay back. Uh, and that's that's the simple formula. He started out, his most famous deals, of course, are, are, are essentially venture capital deals like, uh, like the Staples uh, situation where he built a company from the ground up. But after Staples, uh, he switched to a different model uh, that he preferred for the rest of his professional career, in which he took over existing companies by putting down small amounts of his own cash borrowing the rest from uh, typically from a giant investment bank taking over controlling sta uh, uh, stakes in companies and then forcing those companies to pay him either through management fees or through or through dividends and that's that's his, his business formula explain what private equity is well, that that is what a private equity fund does. They're they're essentially it's it's a synonym for what in the '80s we called the leverage buyout business. Uh, it's it's a it's a small group that raises capital and then goes and and uh, leverages takeovers of companies using borrowed money. Um, in the '80s, these uh, this sort of business was uh, glamorized in a, through a couple of things, in particular in pop culture. Uh, one was the movie Wall Street, uh, where Gordon Gecko. Uh, the famous Michael Douglas character from the Oliver Stone movie uh, was essentially a, a private equity guy. He was a, a leveraged bu a buyout takeover artist. And the other one was a book called Barbarians at the Gate, um, which was a true story of the takeover of RJR Nabisco by a company called KKR, uh, which is another uh, Bain ca uh, Capital-like uh, takeover company. And um, and that's what they are. They're they're essentially guys who borrow money to take over companies and and extract wealth from those companies. Uh, to pay off their investors. Uh, Matt, you say that Mitt Romney is not the flip-flopper that uh, critics say he is. Yeah, I mean, this is a sort of a subtle point about Mitt Romney. It, it, it's funny. I don't want to stretch this comparison too much, but you know, there's a. It's it's almost like he has um, a kind of a religious conviction uh, about uh, being able to lie to people outside of the tent, uh, so to speak. You know, there's that tenet of some uh, forms of extreme uh, 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 Muslim uh, religions where it's where it's okay to lie to the infidel, um, and I think uh, Mitt Romney has a little bit. Of that, he's uh, he seems to believe that um, it's okay. There, there's nothing particularly wrong with changing one's mind about things, and he does it repeatedly in a way that I think is different from other politicians. Uh, for him, it's just changing a, a business strategy, uh, and he doesn't see why everybody should get so upset about it. You say that Mitt Romney has a vision that he's trying for something big. Lay out what that vision is. 
Well, Mitt Romney is really the representative of an entire movement that's taken over uh, the American business uh, world in the last couple of decades. You know, America used to be, um, especially the American economy, was built uh, upon this uh, uh, brick-and-mortar industrial economy where we had factories, we built stuff, and we sold it here in America, and we exported it all over the world. Um, that manufacturing economy was the foundation for uh, our wealth and power for uh, a couple of centuries. And then in the 80s, uh, we started to transform ourselves from a uh, manufacturing economy to a financial economy, and that um, uh, process, which uh, you know on Wall Street we call finan you know financialization, uh, was really uh, led that uh, sort of this revolution where instead of making products, we made uh, transactions, we made financial products like uh, credit default swaps and collateralized debt obligations. Uh, we created money through financial transactions rather than building products uh, and selling them around the world. And, and that revolution was really led by uh, people like Mitt Romney. And the advantage of financialization from the point of view uh, of the very rich and, and the people who, who run the American economy uh, is that it was extremely efficient at extracting wealth and kicking it upward, uh, whereas the old manufacturing economy uh, had the, uh, quote, the, the sort of negative uh, effect of uh, spreading around to the entire population. Uh, in the financialization war, uh, uh, revolution, you can take all of the money and you don't have to spread it around with anybody. And, and Mitt Romney was kind of a symbol of that uh, fundamental shift in our economy.